Well, hi, everybody. I'm Don Stewart, and welcome to another edition of Breaking News. Today is Wednesday, the 21st day of August 2024. And as always, we have some headlines for you that continue to support what the Bible has to say our world will be like at the time of the end before the second coming of Christ and the many events that will precede it. Now, our latest headlines include this, negotiations for a prisoner swap are on the brink of collapse and a possible war is feared. Now, this comes from the U.S. side that are looking at the negotiations. So it's uh, they're fearful that uh, there's going to be no deal like we've talked about between Hamas and Israel. Now, to add to this, the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force, confirms that a top Iranian terrorist leader was eliminated, eliminated in London. Will Iran respond? Because recall that the last time they eliminated a leader uh, in Beirut, that was that person back in April. What happened? Oh, that's when Iran attacked with this huge missile response. So will they use this as a pretense, another pretense for attacking? We will see. The Democrats are trying to reassure Jews about Kamala Harris's anti-Israel views. Good luck with that. And finally, one of the interesting questions that we deal with here often on breaking news are uh, basically discoveries in the news that tend to, you know, base, um, show the reliability of scripture. And there's many of them. We've written a whole book on ancient mysteries of the Bible solved on our sub on our website, Educating Our World under the subject of the Bible, where we've talked about archaeological discoveries that show the truthfulness of Scripture, that it's totally trustworthy and all that it teaches, and it's amazingly accurate. Well, there's another story in the news today, and that's new evidence the Shroud of Turin does date back to the time of Jesus, and we will talk about that. Okay, let's go to head headlines. Number one, U.S. officials say the prisoner swap deal is on the brink of collapse. U.S. officials are concerned that if talks for a prisoner swap deal with Hamas fail, Iran may attempt direct, a direct strike on Israel, escalating tensions throughout the Middle East. Negotiations for a ceasefire prisoner swap, swap between Israel and the Hamas terror group are on the brink of collapse. This is what U.S. and Israeli officials both tell the online uh, political uh, magazine called Politico. The two officials, two, is, two U.S. and two Israelis, told Politico that there is no clear alternative for the deal which Hamas has rejected. Isn't that interesting? They noted that Israel has accepted the offer, but Hamas is refusing to do the same. According to the one of the U.S. officials, Hamas has privately indicated that it was amenable to the deal, even though its public rhetoric said otherwise. Now, many U.S. officials are unsure whether Hamas is opposed or interested in the agreement at all. One of the officials told Politico, we don't know if Hamas leader Sinwar wants the deal, but if we don't get the deal, uh, there's a chance that Iran attacks and this escalates into a full-blown confrontation. In the efforts to reach a ceasefire prisoner swap deal with Hamas, if they fall through, that would raise the chance of an Iranian attack on Israel, which the U.S. official noted is the, obviously the biggest concern we have, uh, as we've been trying to avoid since the October 7th uh, uh, slaughter of those Israelis in that particular day by Hamas. Now, there was that attack, of course, on April 13th and 14th. Uh, they seem to forget that, which was uh, thwarted by Israel plus the United States plus some of the allies in the region, this uh, missile attack. But uh, this could be even larger. What they're worried about, as we've talked about, it's not just Iran doing this, but Hezbollah from Lebanon shooting its missiles off. You've got now from the West Bank, we've got problems there of uh, Judea, Samaria. Many of the munitions and weapons have now been smuggled into there to use against Israel. Of course, you've got Hamas, then you have Iraq and, and Syria. And so not much, not to, to get the Houthis way down south in Yemen. So at least seven different areas they could be attacked at uh, if Iran could organize something like that. So that, of course, is the worry. So all indications point to Hamas not wanting the deal. So will there be a war? The answer is nobody knows. And if not, it's a real interesting. You got a lot of speculation. Why not? We're going to talk about that, too, uh, probably later today in our second uh, edition of Breaking News. But um, will there be a war? Again, we don't know. OK, but here's another problem. Headline number two, the IDF confirms a member of Iran's Quds force was eliminated in Lebanon. Kali al Makda and his brother Mornir collaborated on behalf of the IRGC, that's the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, are involved in the direct, uh, direction of terror attacks as well as smuggling of weapons and funds designated for terrorist activities in Judea and Samaria, the IDF reported. On Wednesday, uh, they eliminated an operative in the uh, 
Quds Force, and that's according to the Arab news reports, it is Khalil al Makda, who was eliminated when a UAV struck his vehicle at a high end neighborhood in the city. Al Hadith Hadath reported that al Makda is the brother of Munir al Makda, a senior Fatah movement official in Lebanon, who Israel in the past accused of smuggling we weapons to Judea and Samaria. And so the Israeli Defense Force confirms the IDF and the ISA continue a series of eliminations in Lebanon of terrorists that are directing terrorist activity in Judea and Samaria on behalf of the Iranian Rebel Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Earlier today, and they tell the story with the direction of the IDF and the ISA, they struck this person and killed him. And so, and they go on to say, they will constantly continue to take action to monitor and thwart activity that endangers the safety of the state of Israel and its citizens in order to expose and impair Iranian attempts to carry out terrorist activities against the state of Israel. And let's again remember in April was when Israel eliminated another top Iranian official in Lebanon that the massive missile attack occurred in response. So again, will this latest incident cause Iran to act or are they not interested because of the repercussions? What's taken them so long? Now, they are saying on one hand, well, they're going to see if the uh, ceasefire deal comes through. Uh, is that really what's stopping them from attacking Israel? We just don't know. All right. Now, speaking of um, not knowing, headline number three, the Democrats try to re reassure Jews about Kamala Harris's anti-Israel drift. Democrats attempt to assuage Jewish voters fears in Chicago on Tuesday about Vice President Kamala Harris' perceived shift towards the anti-Israel far left as she courts anti-Israel activists and appoints anti-Israel policy advisors. It's more than a perceived shift. It is a shift. This is from Breitbart News. They reported Harris appointed, as we mentioned this, a Jewish liaison, Ilan Goldenberg, who has helped lead efforts to sanction Israelis and has worked on the Iran deal in the Obama administration. Uh, very much anti-Semitic um, Jewish liaison. And then Harris appointed a Muslim liaison with a history of anti-Israel activism who has rejected the idea that anti-Israel protests on campuses are anti-Semitic. She also met secretly with the anti-Semitic mayor of Dearborn, Michi Michigan, to court his support. And we can add to this, remember not showing up at Netanyahu's speech before Congress and then blasting him publicly after a private meeting with him. The Times of Israel reported of a panel discussion outside the Democratic National Convention organized by the American Jewish community. It noted a Kamala Harris administration, they said, will not cut or condition U.S. security assistance to Israel. Her former aide said during a panel on the sidelines of the Democratic National Convention, uh, they mentioned the fact that the Biden-Harris administration, well, this is basically Joe Biden, gave $15 billion to Israel, the largest ever that's been given to any country. Of course, it was all Joe Biden doing it. She had nothing to do with this, but they tried to link her with this. And so they have also uh, uh, represented Brad Schneider, who spoke yesterday with Harris's campaign, a uh, new Jewish outreach chief Goldberg. This is the anti-Semitic Jew who uh, you know, has been against Israel from the beginning. And he assured him that the Democratic Party's presidential nominee would oppose a return to the Iran nuclear deal. Yeah. Well, anyway, Harris and President Biden have used increasingly critical rhetoric towards Israel and also have softened their criticisms, as we notice, of anti-Israel protesters. On Monday night, remember what Biden said? He told the convention that the protesters have a point. These are protesters that are anti-Semitic, Semitic debt to the Jews, this and that, but never mentioned Israel, never once at all. So what's going to be interesting to see, they really need the Jewish vote to win in November and usually get it. Will she say anything in her acceptance speech tomorrow night about Israel, about the protests? Could be very interesting. Is she going to ignore it or is she going to say something? Stay tuned. Now, along the line, what we mentioned at the beginning, on breaking news, we usually deal with stories that have something to do with the last day's Bible prophecy that shows the miraculous uh, predictions of scripture with respect to the events that will take place at the time of the end. And we, we see this happening every single day. But also there are stories that come across the wire that basically, you know, uh, confirm the historical reliability of scripture events that uh, took place in the past, that uh, discoveries have been made and they continue to be made. It's amazing how many have been made that show the writers of scripture had minute knowledge of the events that took place in the past, recorded them correctly. And uh, you have to understand, these are the same accounts where they record miracles taking place, 
where they accurately record the background and the history of when the miracle occurred. And so um, they, they're very meticulous in their uh, recording of what did take place. They're, they're correct over and over again. And so we bring that to the forefront to show the Bible is trustworthy in all that it teaches. Now, this story here is interesting. Scientists make breakthrough discovery about analyzing cloth that Jesus was buried in. What about the Shroud of Turin? Uh, this has been a controversy for, well, for decades, century plus, but there's an interesting new story that came out. This Breitbart News did it, and let me just read it to you. A team of scientists analyzing the Shroud of Turin, a large piece of cloth believed by many to be the burial cloth of Jesus Christ himself, have determined that the shroud does indeed date back to the time of Jesus' life. Using a new technique involving wide-angle x-rays, the Italian researchers at the Institute of Crystallography at the National Research Council concluded that the material used to make the cloth was manufactured around the time that Jesus walked the earth, some 2,000 years ago. First displayed before the public in the 1350s, 1350s, the Shroud of Turin was presented as a burial cloth Joseph of Arimathea used to wrap the broken body of Jesus Christ after the crucifixion and his death on the cross. However, in the 1980s, scientists cast doubt on this belief after a team of researchers examined the shroud and declared that it only dated back to the Middle Ages, hundreds if not over a thousand years after Christ's death. Now, with more modern and advanced testing procedures contradicting the claims of the scientists who tested the cloth in the 1980s, there is renewed belief that the fabric that contains the bloodstained imprint of a bearded man with his arms folded is indeed the burial shroud of Christ himself. And the article goes on to say the wrappings of Jesus' body in the burial cloth is clearly outlined in scripture. For to the Matthew 27, 59 to 60, then Joseph of Arimathea took the body and wrapped it in a new linen cloth. He put the, Jesus' body in a new tomb that he had dug in a wall of rock. They closed the tomb by rolling a very large stone to cover the entrance. After he did this, he went away. Of course, John's gospel tells us Nicodemus did it with him. The shroud itself tells a story consistent with the passion narrative found in the four canonical gospels detailing Jesus' suffering and death. The cloth is marked with blood stains consistent with the back and shoulder wounds that Jesus suffered from his scourging, in addition to the presence of thorn marks on his head. The different methodologies used by the research teams who have analyzed the shroud reflect the changes and advancements in the processes used to authenticate ancient materials. In 1988, what happened, I remember this because we I'd written a book, co-authored a book a few years earlier that mentioned this. Uh, researchers analyzed a piece of the shroud using a carbon dating system. This technique relies on studying the decay of radioactive isotopes, or C14, uh, to measure time and date objects containing carbon bearing material. Now, using this system, this was a big deal in 1988. They determined that the shroud was manufactured sometime between 1260 and 1390 AD. In the most recent study, the more sophisticated equipment used, again, this wide angle X ray, and basically what they found out that it does date back to the time of Christ. So controversy has raged over the shroud since its unveiling, and despite the breakthrough findings of Italian researchers, it's unlikely to end. However, it's getting harder and harder for critics to explain away this cloth, as we now know it was manufactured in the Middle East at the time of Jesus' life, and just happens to contain bloodstains corresponding to the Passion narrative in the Bible. It's preserved, been preserved in the Royal Chapel of the Cathedral of San Giovanni Battista in Turin, Italy, since 1578. So there you go. Is it the actual burial cloth of Christ? It's, it's possible it could be. There is an article that the Biblical Research Associates did uh, about a year ago or so. BibleArchaeology.org is a group I actually financially uh, support. They do a fabulous job. And the article went, on, went through very clearly the... Uh, the Greek text in the four Gospels and show that what we see with the shroud is not inconsistent with the burial cloth of Christ. Some of the supposed contradictions are dealt with when they go to the original text. So the point is, it very well could be. And uh, it's, you know, it's possible. And I'm not, I used to be very negative towards it. I've, over the years, I've become more and more open and this evidence makes it further clear that it could very well be. Let me give you the however, though. Um, as we know here every day, there's many evidences that the Bible gives to support the claims of Christ, to support the claims of the biblical writers that God exists. He knows the future. He's told us the future. He's given evidence of that. And I like to stick with that uh, rather than 
something like the Shroud of Turin, because something someday may show up that shows it's not the authentic burial cloth of Christ. And we want to put our faith in what God has revealed in his word first and foremost. Now, we do this in a book called The Case for Christianity. We give our evidences for the Christian faith. That's found on our website, Educating Our World. It's a free download under the subject of Jesus Christ, where we have a number of books on the person of Christ and one uh, giving the case for Christianity evidence as to why we should believe Jesus is the one whom he claimed to be. And it's true, as we mentioned every day, all of our books are available for free download on our website, Educating Our World. Please take advantage of them. They're there for your edification. They're to help you understand what the Bible teaches about God, the person of Christ, uh, the nature of humanity, etc. So anyway, that's it for today. We will continue on with uh, more stories as they come across the wire, as they seem to do every moment here. Uh, setting the stage for the events that will take place in the Middle East. Will there be a regional war? Will the, uh, Iran get involved? Were they not? Will Hezbollah? We just don't know. But we're giving you the latest every single day here. And so stay tuned. But the good news is, as we always say, we do know how it's all going to end. Christ will come back and set up his kingdom, and we will be part of that wonderful kingdom. Now that's something to rejoice about. I'm Don Stewart. Thanks for watching. And until next time, as always, may our Lord richly, richly bless you.